We have with us uh, today Dr. Thomas Hedrick, uh, the Finance Minister of uh, Kerala. Uh, Dr. Isaac is a four time uh, MLA and he currently represents uh, the Alapura constituency. Um, apart from, uh, from the portfolio of finance, uh, he also handles Koya, which is a, which is a big, big portfolio in Kerala. He's also been a very prominent face uh, in Delhi uh, and a vocal voice in, in some of the interstate uh, and state centre deliberations that have happened over the last two years. The GST uh, meetings and also now the, uh, the debate over the terms of reference for the 15th Finance Commission. Uh, welcome to the Express Idea Exchange, sir. Uh, so essentially, uh, we could start with you uh, giving uh, an opening remark and then follow it up with questions. All of what you say is, is considered to be for the uh, unless there's something specific. You asked me a question to begin with. Yeah, okay. so, <laughs> so I'll probably start in the, you know, some of the decisions taken by your government uh, have been very, uh, you know, you don't really associate them with a traditional left government. Um, the, um, the land acquisition for highways, having a Harvard uh, economist uh, as an advisor, the recent decision on no fully abolishing the gawking wages, uh, a single window clearance for, for industry. Now, all of these decisions don't really fit into the mold of a traditional left, left government. So was this a considered decision? And is it also a, a realization that state units perhaps might have to reinvent themselves, even if those at AKG Bhavan or Ajay Bhavan's Begin the Indians stick with the old stance. Um, there is indeed a conscious shift in the left position. And it's not the first time. The left position has been evolving over time. Now, if we take, um, say, traditionally left any place, they try to mobilize people on the base of redistributive slogans. A left is not there to take charge of production, developing industry and so on. There is agriculture, industry and left mobilizes the workers and persons to ensure they get a fair share of the distribution and organize them, raise their political consciousness and then change the system using that. Okay, we have done that well in Kerala. Uh, so that um, average citizen there enjoys a much better standard of living, quality of life when compared to the rest of India. And we are very proud of that achievement. Now, two things have happened. One is the uneven development of the left movement in India. So we are the very advanced, <laughs> achieved these redistributive goals and so on. Second is that our success raises new challenges. For example, now everybody is literate, the people are not satisfied with the ordinary classrooms, they want um, much higher quality of education. Uh, now that your life expectancy has risen to 76 uh, and plus, uh, you have new lifestyle diseases uh, coming up. Uh, which cannot be treated in the traditional health system. So you need to uh, totally reinvent your system. And now that every child is, uh, every youth is educated, the, the job aspirations have gone up. They are not satisfied with the uh, employment opportunities of their parents. And they want quality jobs, uh, which is in tune with the uh, educational attainment. Now, if the left doesn't have a program to meet these uh, challenges raised by its own success, then you will be undermining yourself. You will have to reinvent yourself. You have to address these new challenges. Now, these challenges are not just question of redistribution, you see. Now, creation of quality jobs would mean that um, you have to move away from your traditional labor industry, in, uh, intensive industries, 
or highly polluting chemical industries, which are the base of Kerala, into industrial sectors um, uh, such as uh, knowledge industries, so service-based industries, or highly skilled industries, or value addition industries. Uh, we, we, have, we are competitive. Now, this cannot be done by the public sector alone. <laughs> you will need to have private investment, but, uh, but the left stands, you can't do what many others are doing in the rest of India, that you gave away the, throw away the labor rights or environmental laws, that we can't do. So then that means that you will have to, how do you attract them? That, then the opportunity lies in creating the best infrastructure. Hmm? Best infrastructure. Uh, you say your infrastructure, physical as well as social, in terms of educational institutions are best in India, come. That gives you an advantage here. So now there is a new challenge uh, to the government that uh, you revamp the entire infrastructure. Uh, at the same time, you have to main, uh, keep uh, alive your past welfare gains. So it's a big challenge. So it means uh, that you have to reposition yourself, you have to rethink about some of the stances. So we are not apologetic about it. You see, we understand the whole uh, mission. Uh, it's a long history. <laughs> you, you don't do knee-jerk reactions. We have no. We are trying to build upon our achievements. So you are right. We have shifted uh, some of our positions. Uh, no, you said that we have to move away from traditional, this kind of thing. But why don't you look at your own traditional industries? Like for example, pepper. Now Karnataka has overtaken Kerala. Same thing, coconut. Now I, I don't think Kerala is anywhere compared to Tamil Nadu or even Karnataka. So why don't, uh, why doesn't Kerala build on its strengths? I mean, is it, I, I don't think this is, this will go, uh, this is contradictory to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, to IT or, uh, you know, big infra. Why don't you focus I, on, I, on, on agri-based industries? I mean, your Kair itself, we know that most of the, m most of the, this thing, it's coming from Tamil Nadu, right? In, in your, in, in, in Alipura, in that place itself. Most of the, this thing, is the, the raw material is now coming from, uh, from, from other states. In Kerala, you can't take a position. We'll mechanize like these old people anyway, they are fag end of life. Let them take care of themselves. That cannot be made. This is, this say, it's a kind of regulated modern, socially regulated modernization, which will not, as in the normal capitalist process, throw out the petty producers to the you know, extinction. No, we'll protect them. So that's the left alternative. That's the left alternative. So, everybody uh, say, now you left, you are taking for most advanced technology. Yes, we will go for most advanced technology. But we are not going to disregard our traditional base. We will protect them. So. Uh, you said many and by the way, we are aware this in agriculture in Kerala cannot survive unless we do the value addition. Coffee. I have been studying Arka coffee. I admire that, what has been done. We are going to turn Wynard into a Wynard brand coffee. And for that purpose, we are going to make Wynard into carbon neutral Wynard district. That will enable us to internationally brand our coffee. Uh, so there is no conflict between the farmer and uh, environment protection building, having trees. Because new coffee will be shade coffee. See, coconut. Unless Kerala learns to have value addition from every piece of coconut, so not only really coconut uh, kernel, but his shell, his husk, his bark, everything, the farmer uh, is not going to have a decent life. So value addition, the point you raised, is part of the agenda. You have to have value addition agriculture, brand them, that's the only way Kerala uh, commercial crops are going to survive because protected market is gone all of a sudden it's open you have to be competitive that structural adjustment is very difficult uh, in answer to the previous question you said that uh, many of the things that you have done is I mean we could not visualize from the left yesterday uh, but the, the, the yesterday West Bengal left tried it Buddha Babu tried it 
and and it, it jolted the lift like anything. It, it has still not recovered. Singur and uh, Nandigram. So, as a sitting distant, uh, uh, different part of the country, as a communist in Kerala, how did you uh, see those developments when the left tried to uh, reorient, recalibrate its position uh, to the new demands of uh, economy? My take on the West Bengal would be that of agriculture, agrarian reforms, we should have understood that we had to shift to industry. We had to improve the social sectors. And that was not sufficient attention being paid. And finally, when you wanted to change, then um, the change was so fast, even many people couldn't accept it. One, land is to be taken if industry has to come. But the farmer should understand it should is not something that few of you can think up and decide it is good for the people and then implement it. The people have to accept the logic of that. Secondly, full compensation is full compensation. That's what we do with the roads. It's a heavy price, but we pay two, three times the market price if necessary. So that there's absolute need. You know. Then we have to also compensate for the agricultural level. Um, see. I would think, for example, I know constant saying so, say Amaravati model is a fairly good model of um, uh, land pooling. Uh, I went there to study that. Uh, it's fully well compensated, you see. We'll have to think of those models so that there is no contradiction, you see. And this is very, very important, okay. Uh, we'll debate, engage with the people who protest, fine and make an offer that they can refuse here. <laughs> Two times, three times the market price, who is going to say no? It puts a heavy burden, fiscal burden on the state. And that Though there is the for financial strains. That's okay. But it's a price that you have to pay. Sir, I, I'm sorry for a <coughs> minute. No, I, I think that uh, the uh, but I read somewhere uh, you saying that there will be no compensation for the Hill Highway project because the people should understand that development is coming their way and they should give it up voluntarily. Yeah. <laughs> See, because Hill Highway comes through areas which are mostly undeveloped. And uh, people want the road. They have been voluntarily giving up the land so that the road do come. Okay? Now, that uh, collaboration with the uh, population is good. The, the fact is that when the road comes, the price are going to go up. Many estate owners, etc. would like to, they are uh, jostling around to see the road comes that way, this way, <laughs> not that way. Because it's a loss of, not the loss of land, the price, that escalation that is going to take place in real estate. And therefore, we will continue. Because it's something, a process that is going on, why should I disrupt it? Of course, there would be people, a marginal farmer who has land, who is losing, you compensate for it. But the stretches have already been built where people have come. It's something like Amaravati model. That's why I mentioned Amaravati model. What is happening there? You are developing an area and then prices are going to astronomically rise. Good, may I know how did you learn this statement of mine? Sir, I'm going to ask you some more things. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't make a statement like that. Somebody asked, you are going to pay the same rate here. I said, no, here you will have to give. It was recorded in some yeah. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Moving to politics, uh, every, every secular opposition party in this country uh, thinking about ways to fight the BJP. Now, there are out of the box ideas that are coming up, you know, the SP and the BSP, traditional rivals, they have joined hands. The JDS and the Congress are coming together. When every party is willing to shed, you know, their rigidity, why is the CPM, despite being the most consistent, credible voice against the right, still being rigid? And, you know, after five days of brainstorming, the only thing you could come up was that the primary objective of defeating the BJP, we will try to achieve without having a political alliance with the Congress party. So why are you still being so rigid? 
<coughs> because we are different. <laughs> because if we are different. All the other parties. Are you willing to see the opposition being different? No, no. We are different. We want to be different also. All the political parties are in the same boat when it comes to the economic reforms or economic policy in India. Um, which is that party which is denouncing uh, neoliberalism in India? Now, you may have debate, right? it is right or wrong, but we have chosen an economic platform which is anti-neoliberal. Hmm? And that is on the platform on which we are trying to mobilize people. And therefore, we want to differentiate ourselves, all right? Even in the past when you have supported Congress, we didn't join the government. Uh, we have done it unconditionally, we haven't taken anything from them. So, um, we have always differentiated ourselves from the right parties. And now all the more should be so because now, unlike in the past, even regional parties are succumbed to neoliberalism totally. Uh, they, they would be more, uh, more uh, eloquent uh, uh, exponents of uh, <laughs> the kind of reforms uh, that should be implemented in India. So that's, that's the starting point. Secondly, we are doing an introspection because it is on this basis that our cadres, our movement is being built up as an alternative. But at the same time, you have to fight this um, communal rabbit fascism that is coming up in India. And we have done our might in the past. But we have, in, have made an introspection that, uh, okay, when Congress is rolling, you, ruling, you join with others to... Um, in a united front or understanding. When BJP comes, you join Congress. And in the process, what has happened, you see, this distinctive feature of the left platform got blurred. And uh, we believe, you may not, but our analysis is that this has been one important reason for uh, undermining of the left influence in many parts of India. And therefore, we did equally long introspection about it and had a critical review of it. So we had to keep our distinct identity and try to mobilize people and that should be the problem. But now the threat of BJP is becoming too imminent. You can't afford a... There will be, if 2019 is an election, to decide whether there should be elections in future in India. Um, this is a different animal not something that we have no, not seen so far. And therefore, we have debated democratically and under, taken understanding. Yes, as in the past, we will not have any alliance with any of these parties, but we will see, um, adopt tactics, selected tactics, to not to split the votes and see BJP defeated. So is it historically, has it united friend tactics been the answer to uh, fighting fascism? Definitely, this is the big battle that is going on and we will do our role, definitely, to see that BJP is defeated. So what could be CPM's role or the left role in the coming days, you know, in 2019, we'll, we all see, you know, simple political analysis shows that, you know, it won't be possible for a one party to, you know, to form the government. It may not be. So, what could be the left's role? Uh, you know, what, what you envisage? Not simple, very complicated. So, we are critically examining our experiences. You will have to have a um, united front with many parties, understand with many parties, uh, isolate BJP, but never give up your identity that you are left. Now, um, this is a larger question. You know, in a country like India, where pace of development is different in different states, there is always going to be this debate about rewarding performance and the need for equity. Uh, now, you will also agree that more developed states are always going to be in a better position to keep increasing their needs, while your more backward states are always going to be struggling to catch up. So, the Finance Commission, which is mandated to decide on the devolution of funds from central to states and how they are going to be between states. 
So isn't that also a question which the Finance Commission has to look at, the, the need of ensuring equity so that the more developed states don't keep on increasing the gap with the less developed states? I cannot claim myself to be a leftist. Sir, if, I, yeah, if I deny the importance of equity in distribution, that's a fundamental principle. Any, any federal system, when redistribution takes place, the backward lagging resource uh, scarce states, they will have to be given more. There's absolutely no regard. That's why the criteria, the distance from average per capita income is an important criteria. Uh, so that is already there. If you want to give more weight to it, welcome. See, I never ever have said reward the, the uh, states which have achieved. That is not the slogan at all. We stand for redistribution to the poorer states. Fine. But don't make that the only criteria. There was two components to distribution formula. One was income distance hmm? to population. Now population base is to be 1971. Now when you make uh, from move it from 1971 to 2011, given the perfect correlation between population uh, transition and uh, economic uh, stature, except for something like Gujarat and so on. <laughs> there, despite the economic advance, the population rate has not come down very much. Except one or two, except the outliers. There is a perfect correlation. Therefore, virtually this 2011 population becomes a proxy for backwardness again. So you have a formula where only consideration is backwardness and uh, how am I to run a government if my uh, share crashes from 2.5, we used to have 3.5, it has come down. I have not, I have always said please give us something more. But I don't go around India protesting that we are discriminated etc. Because I understand perfectly well it's based upon a formula. But how can my share be reduced from 2.5 to 1.8? Tamil Nadu done so. Because there are certain minimum services that has to be provided from the revenue, cannot be borrowed. And that is required. So that is disruptive. So I am not against equity. In fact, I am for equity. That's what I said. If I cannot be called a leftist if I say, no, no, reward the achievers. No, I agree with you. And this is the procedure adopted by all finance commissions Keep to that tradition. That's what we say. Wasn't the 2011 uh, figure partly used by the 14th Commission? Yes. So leave it to the Finance Commission here. Yeah? Let Finance Commission in wisdom choose how, what is the kind of percentage weightage to be given to 2011 and to 1971. Why bind their hands? Uh, you have been quite vocal during GST Council meetings. A little louder. Huh? Okay. Even in the last meeting, you uh, opposed both the proposals for uh, digital digital payments in centers and sugar sets. So I have three questions. Um, how easy or difficult it is to put across your point during GST meetings? How easy or difficult is it to? Put across your point during GST council meetings since you would be in a minority there. Okay. Well, <coughs> when this GST council was formed, um, um, there were many states, uh, at least uh, 15 states, would, would take a politically different position from center. And therefore, there was a, a meaningful you know, consensus through negotiation. But now the situation has changed. Uh, the, we have become a very small minority. But so far, I would uh, I, am, I admire the approach taken by um, Arun Jaitley, who could have taken decisions by majority decision. He has always resisted that short path. 
but uh, taken on a path of discussion and try to reach an understanding. Though I suspect that um, many a times is better assessment and sense is being overruled from outside. But that has been, <laughs> that has been, <laughs> otherwise nobody with right sense will try to put uh, uh, incentive for digitalization. This is a crazy stuff here. Sir, staying with GST in the eight months that we've just completed, July to February yeah. period, and ha have all the states that have suffered shortfall been able to identify what could be the biggest reason, uh, reason for that? Some of the states haven't uh, suffered shortfall, they've met their uh, targets. Kerala revenues were rising by 20% yearly per annum. That's a very good increase. Uh, I can gives a lot of elbow room for doing so many things. But then it continued at this rate for two more years in the next government, then it came down sharply. So one reason we adopted went to GST is that GST would buoy up our revenue again. Given the kind of welfare programs, etc., that are being initiated, like the issues I said, supporting traditional industry, our revenues have to grow by anything between 20 to 25 percent. And GST, we thought, would provide that. Reason being, Kerala is a destination state. 80 percent of a consumption, 75 to 80 percent of a consumption, marketable consumption, comes from outside. So therefore, uh, you would start to gain. Secondly, Kerala is one with a um, high density of services and therefore it would be better off. So our government's program right from the first budget was tuned to this, a revenue rise of 20 to 25 percent, but uh, minimum 20 percent which is preposterous because we had achieved it with VAT. So now, but after GST came in, it is increased only by 10% or even less. The reason is, GST system is not in position. Whoever could ever imagine such a shabby implementation of a most important program for the nation, you see. Now, one year into the program, we are debating about the return form. Yeah. We have not finalized the return form. The GSTR one, everything is going to change. It will going to take another six months to do that. But sir, recent IMF report in March says that India has kind of surveyed the worst and uh, is the economy is uh, look to be good, um, and the demonetization effect, everything is fading. What do you have to say about it? Survive. Why should we go through this ordeal? <laughs> really? <laughs> Tell me what good reason why we had to suffer all this. To prove what point? <laughs> Tell me, is has there been any instance in the world where a country doing good demonetizing? Only when nations go through crisis, <laughs> the, that money loses, even if it's worthless, even the paper they are printed upon, they do this kind of antics. Here is a economy cruising at six, six, seven percent and so on, then you shoot its tires. <laughs> and say, we have survived the crash. <laughs> what a great achievement. <laughs> Just imagine, take the total quantum of the national laws. It's a criminal act. Because such an audacious, audacious act, nobody could think that unless a big something was behind, it would be done. So even if you don't believe it, you think something big stuff was behind. There was nothing else <laughs> until this, uh, other than this uh, Nagpur <laughs> guy's <laughs> theory about <laughs> demonetization <laughs> and getting 5 lakh crores of rupees as manna from heaven, which was bandied out by even by Arun Jaitley in our meeting. See, so this kind of crude, not discussing with any decent economists, not even the economists who supported it would have advised them to do it. Are you expecting an early election? Well, 
I don't know. There are two ways. Though BJP thinks they have captured the entire India except six or seven states, Karnataka shows also the moment you have an opposition understanding or unity, they are a small minority. They have not improved very much from the 31 percent support base with which they came to power with two thirds majority in the parliament. So only factor which permitted them to achieve, capture power was opposition vote split. Now Karnataka election would end, I think speed up this process of understanding between opposition parties, prevent the vote split. So I think um, can they can think. Don't give them time. Let's go. <laughs> or they may think, well, this is the situation. Let's wait for some time. Something may happen. I don't know what their calculation is. Thank you so much. Thank you.